Hi guys, welcome to the little wood shop again. So for this week we're gonna restore the old restaurant table. It's the same customer that we restored the little office desk for. And I'm quite looking forward to this little project. It's not much wrong with it, the top is in quite good shape. The legs is, need some serious attention. So uh, let's strip it. <laughs> So guys everything came apart except for the one leg is very very well glued so I'm gonna leave that as it is we'll send it as it is there but all the tenons came out nice and proper we can reuse them but I can't say the same for the legs there's some of the legs this was the bad leg really bad so we'll have to make a plan with this and really reinforce this leg a lot before we can put it back so for today I'm finished I'm going for a nice barbecue by a friend and uh, we'll continue with this tomorrow morning hi guys so now what I'm doing at the moment is I glued up all the little pieces on the legs let's see what we can save there for now I'm just cleaning up all the tenons making sure they're nice and clean and crisp corners again so that you can start reassembly but before I'm going to reassemble I'm going to sand every part loose just so much easier and then we'll see what wood it is it's definitely not oak like I thought this is normal Maranti very soft and cracks easy but let me clean the tenons and take it from there so I found another piece that is cracked quite badly so what I do is I've got one of these old it's what the oil painters use I actually stole it from my wife it's got a very very thin little scoop or blade and I take my glue I just wedge open a little bit I really put as much glue as I can in there and I then just make sure I get glue as far as possible into this little crack I'm just going to clamp it and we'll wait for it to dry while I'm waiting for the glue to dry on the table I just want to quickly fix this for a friend the same guy that I glued up the top from red oak and white oak he brought me these two Oregon pine door frames that comes in a very old dilapidated cupboard that he's restoring but they've put some type of putty that they put the glass in with and he asked me if I will be able to remove it so the easiest way I can think of removing it with is the router and he gave me two straight cut router bits that I'll use in the trim router with a big um, perspex base but one of the problems I got in this case for example is 
if you look at the frame on this side it's 65 millimeters the frame on this side is all broken out 60 millimeters so there's a 5 millimeter smaller this side than this side so I've put up a fence from the outside to give me an equal cut so I'm going to clean it that side and I'm just going to clean whatever is necessary on this side so that the glass stays square I'm definitely going to use a mask because this stuff makes a very very fine dust and let's see if we can cut this clean So I got both of them now nice and square and all the putty out, or most of the putty out. And all I concentrated on is getting the shape where the glass is 100% square. Now just as an extra clean up, I'm just going to clean up the old paint with a little flame. And then also to give it a nice and crisp square corner. where the little rebate is where the two doors close on each other I'm just going to give it a quick clean to make sure it's also a nice and square fit when they put the two together again Something else I must do for the same customer is he wants to use these old brass knobs on the doors that we just fixed and he needs to find a way to put this onto the doors. I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fold them with resin and uh, then he can drill and tap or he can just drill and glue in some screws that he can put through the door so all I've done is just to close these holes I just took some masking tape and I closed the little holes and then I'm going to take my resin and just fill them up with resin which will be nice because then they will also be nice and solid because these tend to dent on the outsides they're very hollow and soft brass so by filling it up with resin will also be more of a solid knob and it won't so easily dent again 
we've tapped out the most of the dents now so this rustic table is going to get very rustic little knobs let me mix some resin Back to the table now, most of the glue joints are now dry and the pieces that are glued back. So I'm going to start the sanding job now and I'm going to start with an 80 grit because the wood is quite soft. I'm going to skip a 60 and just start with an 80 just to get all the marks and dents out with the little orbital sander. And uh, what I done first is I made sure to carry over all my marks where I'm going to sand now. I marked which tenon goes to which leg. I just transferred it to where I'm not going to send. Just makes the assembly process later much easier. So I've got the whole base now sanded and just dry fitted together to see if all the tenons fit correctly and all the shoulders are nice and closed. I'm happy. So to save the broken tenons and because the wood is quite dry and very soft, it's a smaranti, it's not a very hard wood, I decided to use um, epoxy glue to glue the tenons. Also it helps with a bit of gap filling because the tenons have shrunk now a lot. And to take up the gap, I'm going to use a two-part epoxy to glue them, just for some extra security. So I've got the worst corner I've got glued up with the epoxy now. I'm going to give that a few minutes to dry. It's a quick five-minute epoxy. So we'll see how that fares. The new inspector is inspecting the work and uh, hopefully she'll be happy with what we've done. So there we are guys, she's all in clamps and uh, ready for a final sand once it's dry. I still have to do the top. The top is luckily there's not much nicks and dings so we don't have to re-edge it. It's just sanding and re-varnishing. But that will continue with next week. <laughs> 